Remember Adam said that we need a dingo. Howdy everybody and welcome to Praise the Pickle Retrospect. 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 Um, where we talk about video games. Everything that we've been playing for the week. Our first impressions, our reviews, and everything that we love, hate, and find incredibly mediocre about them. I am your host, Mr. Benjamin Watts. I am joined by Mr. Daniel Watts. Hi. Hello. And I'm also joined by Mr. Kevin Hart. Can I, I've always wondered this as well. And oh, every God. single week this happens... Yeah. Why am I always the second one to get? Because introduced? because we're, but me and Dan are both Watts, so it just makes sense to do the Wattses first. Well, surely and, I should be first. It's alphabetical. Well, you're never yeah, going to be first. first name. No, we're not doing it by first. No, what? No, shut up. Whatever. Kev, you're always going to be last. Okay, you're last to everything you ever do. Um. <laughs> cool. So, um, you guys enjoy talking. <laughs> I'll. Uh... <laughs> I'll possibly see you next week. I'm not sure if I'm going to be here either. Um, and that's good anyway, um, if you guys want to leave us some feedback or follow us on social Stand media bother. or like us or do whatever with us and communicate with us on, on all the social media platforms and shiz, Kevin, how do they do it? If you want to go tell Ben how much of a batty crease he is, <laughs> you can go you know, to Instagram, which is Praise the Pickle Podcast, or you can go to Twitter and Facebook, which is Praise the Pickle, or you can email in, just like the lovely Happy Pickler, Happy Pickler's back, which is Praise the Pickle Podcast at gmail dot com dot com indeed. And if anybody <laughs> wants to uh, just love us, and you know, we put a lot of effort into this podcast, right? And we love you guys. And we hope that you love us too, because love is a mutual feeling. And if you want to do that, then you go onto any podcast love platform, because we're on everything pretty much, uh, and just go on them and just subscribe, leave a rating, leave a review, and it'd be much appreciated. Yeah. So, what we've been playing, guys? Let's do it as we always do it. Uh, are there any games we've all played together? So me and Kevin have both played Ori, so we'll... we'll We'll, we'll do that at the end. I guess me and Dan have both played the first story. Yeah. And okay. Then... Have you guys played anything new? Ori. Okay. Um, only Warzone, which we all played. And yeah, Warzone. Warzone. Oh, God, there's actually quite a lot to talk about this week. Okay. Um, do you want me to get all my ones that I've been playing out of the way? Do it. Do it. Jinx. <sighs> played a lot this week, guys. I apologise in advance. So... First game I'll talk about is I've gone completely blank. I didn't write these down. What have I played this week? Um, okay, I've played um, Darkest Dungeon, which is nice. a uh, how on earth would you describe Darkest Dungeon? It's, video it's game. It's a video game <laughs> in a so very a, very dark dungeon. It's a very unforgiving dungeon crawler game where you basically assemble a party and go into dungeons and do turn-based combat and explore these dungeons get all the loot you can and then escape that's the idea um you have it's really interesting you have health bars and you have sanity bars and you have to maintain both which is the interesting part and the sanity part's really cool because like if your enemies have attacks that damage your sanity basically mean you go insane and there's two levels of insanity when you get to the first level your character develops an insane feature. So affliction or, um, I don't know, angry or whatever. And they basically, so for example, one of them is um, like a depressing morale, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, and it basically, every now and then your character will just get really depressed and be like, oh man, we're never going to win this. And then that brings everyone else's <laughs> sanity down, basically. And stuff like that. It's really cool. It's, so optimism's where it's at. Optimism's where it's at, exactly. Um, it's okay, very confusing. And <laughs> shut up. It's very confusing, and it's also very difficult. 
and I hate it on the Nintendo Switch. If you're thinking about buying this game, do not get it on the Switch unless that's the only console you've got because it has the worst control system I have ever used in any video game where it it can't make up its mind as to whether it's touchscreen or not. <laughs> so half of the controls you have to touch the screen, the other half Ew. you use the con- thing. But that doesn't work at all. It's the most horrible control system I've ever used, to be honest. But you have you have to touch the yeah. screen, even if you're using the Joy-Cons. Yeah. So what if you're playing it in docked? I don't know if you can. I haven't tried. But half the controls what? are touch screen. I know, it's insane. It's completely Can you bonkers. not change the controls? No. Yeah, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I've That's gone through all the, all the settings and stuff. You can't change it. So I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if in docked you can. But even then, I don't want to play it docked. If I want to play it handheld, no. I should be able to just play it handheld with the bloody controllers. Yeah. Like it, it's ridiculous. I, I don't care if it, if it's finicky with the controllers. I would still prefer that. Like even if it had a cursor or something to go through all the options and stuff, I would still prefer that. Or it just be touchscreen. Like, one or the other. It can't be both. It's so frustrating. Like, frustrating to the point where I, it makes me not want to play it, which is a real shame because it is a really good game. Um, mm. But, yeah, I'll, I'll try and dock this week, see if that works, and then at least I haven't completely... Yeah, I'm curious to see if that changes anything. If it does, it's still not great, but... Yeah, at least at least then it would be the same as me playing it on PC, wouldn't it? But Yeah, I just, just want to know if there is implementation for that. Mm at all and if there is then why can you not yeah it's true. It like yeah, yeah. It's, it's that bonkers. makes no sense um, but I mean the game itself the mechanics wise is really cool it's got I think it's like eldritch horror sort of stuff again yeah um, and the graphical like the art style was wicked like this like comic booky cell shaded style thing you all the characters are really cool and unique there's a lot to get your head around, though. Like, you turn that game on, and half an hour later, you're like, well, I have no idea what on earth anything is on this game at all. <laughs> but I imagine after various, you know, plays and playthroughs and stuff, you probably get to grips with it. Like, as your characters lose sanity, you have to put them into, like, sanitariums and asylums and stuff, and it's it's really complicated, and it's kind of overwhelming, if I'm honest, but yeah, it's, it is really good. But I don't know if it's for me. I don't know how much more I'll play it because it's it is a bit of a time sink as well. You do have to, you know, I've put a couple of hours into it already, and I still don't know what I'm doing. So, <laughs> um, yeah. But I think I'll I'll play a bit more at least. Um, uh, the thing I do like about it is that it has got like missions and like a progression to it. It's not just like a very like sort of thing. So mm-hmm. it's quite cool. Uh, that's the first thing. I've played um, Black Mesa, which is the uh, the um, mod uh, modded Half Life One. Yeah. yeah, I'm kind of sad you got to this before I did, but go on. I, I I'd happily not talk about it this week if you want to play it. We we'll talk about it next week. No, no, no. Go go ahead. I want to hear what you think. So it's far. brilliant. It's it's it it re- what's brilliant about it, re- it is it reminds me how bloody good Half-Life was, right? Cause all, you needed reminding? I, I no, no, I do. I've, I've never played Half-Life 1. So I, I've, oh, you yeah, said yeah, this. I've played yeah, Half-Life yeah. 2, and I've played Episode two, 1 and 2, whatever, you know. Or everything after Half-Life 1 I've played, basically. Because um, Half-Life 1 was already outdated by the time I got around to Half-Life 2, so... Yeah. Um, but it's just brilliant. I can't believe that just making a graphical uphaul like they've done... Is it... It's more than that though. They've they've re-recorded all the vocals. They've yeah, done yeah, yeah, extra yeah. bits yeah. and pieces. I, I, they've redesigned different yes, areas. They've done a lot. Don't get me wrong, but the core gameplay is still the same. If that makes sense. Yeah. And, and the fact that that still holds up to the standard it does today is mad. Like it's so yeah. good. <laughs> it's so good, right? And yeah, Kev, you have to play this. I, I, yeah, I said to you yesterday that this would be a really good streaming yeah. game, and I. I want to hear your thoughts on it because, like, as someone that has no affiliation whatsoever with the Half Life world, I feel like you need you you you, you it'll be a good experiment for you to play. <laughs> yeah, 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 probably I would. Agree. I think I, I definitely um I I 
I'll see if I can pick it up this week. Is, yeah. it, is it? Where where did I download it from? From the Black Mesa website? No, 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 from Steam. Steam. Yeah, oh, Steam. Steam oh, are okay. in affiliation with it as well, so um, they they sort of helped them out and allowed them to use all the stuff. Yeah, them, which is quite cool. But um, Valve officially sanctioned it, which is really cool. They said, "Yeah, this is totally cool. Mm. We'll we'll support you with this development, even though it was a user made mod of one of their own games." Yeah. They liked what they were doing so much that they said, "Well, yeah, you know, keep going with this, and um, you've you've got our backing." Mm. So that's really cool. Yeah, and it, it's it's just brilliant. The gunplay's fantastic. The atmosphere is just incredible. Still, like the puzzles are still good. I, I think the only thing that Half Life One was missing was is it the grav gun that was in the second one? Yeah, oh yeah, you manually pick things up and move them around. Yeah, you? oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it's still got the physics, but it, it doesn't have... Yeah, the part... Wait, does it have a grav gun? Do you not get one later on oh, in the wait, game? Oh, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm about five, four or five hours in. I haven't got one yet, but... Um, Maybe you don't. I can't remember, actually. It, it's great. Half-Life is the perfect example of a journey in a, in a game, right? Where shit goes down... And then it's just consistent and you're you're with it for every step of the way. And whenever you feel like, so because you're in an underground lab at the start and whenever you feel like you're getting close to, to like escaping or to accomplishing something, everything goes tits up again. And it's just this consistent, amazing, not even storytelling, just... Uh, like how do you explain it like <laughs> it's just this really um what's the word what's the word do you mean in terms of like the pacing, pacing that's the one thank you yeah the pacing is incredible it's some of the best pacing in any game i've ever played mm-hmm. and is it, it is yeah. is it not just the same as was previously what the the black mesa compared to half-life one yeah, I've, like I said, I've never played Half Life One, so this is coming from someone that's never played it. It's basically so. scene for scene, almost exactly the okay, same, okay. which is a testament to how good the original. Yeah, that's what oh, I'm trying okay, to say. Okay. Is that, yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. Forget the fact that it's Black Mesa. The fact that Half Life One was that good at the time is incredible. Like, it's it's just brilliant, man. I, there's nothing more to say about it. It's so freaking good, and I cannot believe it holds up this well obviously I, I have to keep reminding myself that this is a modded version and it is up to date and stuff but just the fact that it's as good as it is i can't get my head over the fact that that came out that long ago and it was that fully fleshed out and that well paced and and yeah. the, the nice thing about the the benefits that you get from it being an updated version you know visually mm. and new sound design and all that that's all community made so that in itself is a really cool yeah. thing as well, yeah, I think, definitely. especially as the Valve engine and all the original Half-Life games were like the the mecca for first-person modding communities, mm. like the the stuff that came out of that. I think Left 4 Dead may have started as a mod, Portal started as a mod potentially. Did Counter-Strike um, started as a mod. Counter-Strike was a mod, yeah. yeah, yeah. So all of that comes from Half-Life. So it's got this pioneering history mm. and this it's like the the bedrock of the modern first person shooter on PC mm. and i think that's so cool and the fact that this entire project was driven by not even an indie studio per se just a group of people that were passionate about the project mm. and wanted to bring it to a new generation and you know there was no guarantee they would ever make any money out of it it's just it's just so cool yeah, i just love the whole idea of this project in general mm. um i'm I'm definitely going to play it. I yeah, you it. have to, man. Like, I, th- I think everyone should play this just just to see where. It's all. I feel like you got. We, we were talking about Doom last week, yeah. And yeah. Doom is good in its own right, but I feel like Half Life was the birth of modern day shooters. Yeah, and like to go back to where that all started is just mad. Like, but uh, it's it's incredible, man. Like. I'm looking forward to Kevin. If you stream this, I'm looking forward to the head crab bits. It's going to be fun. <laughs> you don't like spiders, do you? So <laughs> no, I'm going to be diving at you from every freaking corner. It's going to be brilliant. Um, yeah, so we be playing that. Um, I have also played. Um, what's the other one I played? 
a Sayonara Wild Hearts. So I've got, I mentioned a few weeks ago that I've got Apple Arcade. And I was like, I'm going to start playing some Apple Arcade games. Didn't play anything. And now I'm finally getting on it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, and I tried Sayonara Wild Hearts again. So I played it last year when it came out, when I got my trial for Apple Arcade. Didn't like it. Turns out it's on Mac now, right? And I played it on my Mac through my speakers, like, and it was brilliant. It was kind of like Thumper in a way, like a rhythm action sort of thing. But it flows really well, and every single level is completely unique. Like, sometimes it starts off you're, you're riding a skateboard, and then suddenly you're driving a motorbike. And then, then you're driving a motorbike from a first-person perspective with a gun on the front. And then, then you're in, like, a video game. Then you're, then you're drifting around in a car. Then you're flying around. Then you're, There's just so many different aspects to it, and it's just a great game. Like, it's, like, 40 minutes long or something, and it's just brilliant. Like, even if you're not a big it's, fan of pop music in general, it's just a... It, with with the game, it flows really well. It's not another example of how listening to a soundtrack of a game without having played the game is really difficult. Like you need to associate that with the experience of the game, like listening to it, sort of thing. Because I listened to the soundtrack and I was like, "This music isn't for me," and that's part of the reason why I didn't really get on with it. But now, question then: Would you listen to the music now outside of the game? Now that you've played the game, some of them, yeah. Some of them, okay. no. They're a bit too happy for me. Sounds stupid, but they're just really like. <laughs> no, I get that. I get that. And I'm just like, oh god, um, <laughs> yeah. But it, it's brilliant, man. Like, a hundred percent recommend it now. It's just great. Cool. Yeah, nothing it's more brilliant. to add about. I, I love, I love like visual, uh, audio visual experiences. Mm. Anything like that, I love to res. Uh, I loved. A thumper was good. It wasn't my favorite, but it was good. Anything that's it's, like. To be honest, it's more like res than thumper. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that might be yeah. the case. I like um it's been compared to a music video kind of because it's I don't know, linked to the music in some mm. way. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's that's yeah, that's, that's what it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the visually it is stunning. I can't believe my Mac could run it, honestly. It's been optimized to a ridiculous so well. standard, yeah. Like so I, I I don't know if you guys have seen this other game on on Apple Arcade, I can't remember what it's called. It's like uh, it's made by Chucklefish, like a little horror pixel art game. In Inmost or something, maybe? Oh, I've seen that name before. Yeah, so it's, it's a pixel art game, really basic, right? My Mac can't run it. It stutters running that. But it it ran thingy, um, Sayonara at like 60 FPS, solid throughout. It was clean as hell. But it looks cool. stunning, man. Like, honestly, some of the... In fact, all of the set pieces in this game are incredible. Like, <laughs> just so good. I loved it. Yeah. Highly, highly awesome. recommend. One, one for the list. Yep. Yeah, you need to play this, Dan. Kev, I don't know about you, but, you know, you like weird games. Cheers, man. Thank you. What do you mean? Um, You're the ones that like weird games. Yeah, no, I'm joking. Uh, You're the one that likes normal No, no more, more the fact that it's 40 minutes for £10. I know you won't do that, so... Um, yeah, yeah, I've also gosh. played very briefly a game called uh, Bleak Sword on Apple Arcade. This I've, I had I no interest this in this. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Why have you heard it, Kev? <laughs> no idea. Um, I had no interest in this game until I saw that it was published by Devolver, and everything that's published by Devolver is bloody good. So it is a game where. You're playing as like a little a little 2D man in a 3D-ish environment, isometric square tile, basically. And you just play level by level and kill all the enemies and try and survive sort of thing. But the beauty of it... So it's on, on your mobile, this one. Um, I, I think you can play it on Mac, actually. And it's got controller support, so I might try it. But the beauty of it on your phone is that it's a portrait game, right? So you can And you can play it with one thumb. And the controls oh, okay. are really intuitive, man. Like, That's yeah. Good. So, like that. so it's basically swipe to roll. Yeah, you can't move. You can just roll. That's it. It's like a little arena fire. Yeah. So you can just roll, and then you hold it for like half a second and swipe to do a normal attack. Hold it for a second and swipe to do a a heavy attack, and then pr and press to do a um block, and that's it. And it's so intuitive and fluid, it's ridiculous. Like, 
honestly, the people that made the controls for this game are amazing. I can't believe how well this functions with one thumb. I can roll, block, oh. parry, light attack, and heavy attack with one thumb with ease. That's it's cool. mad, honestly. Really yeah, cool. the arts and it's portrait and it's portrait. Yeah, yes. yeah. So it, it's perfect. It's like the perfect mobile game. Um, and again, it's got a progression system. It's not just a roguelite sort of game. You can you have to complete the game sort of thing, which is exactly what I need in my life. Um, and it's mm-hmm. brilliant, man. Like you do level by level. It's you know it's kind of like tight tower full. I nearly did it again. Tower full ascension sort of thing. You know you do a level. You get attacked by certain enemies on each level, and you have to kill them without dying. And then you get items and shit, and move on, and that's it. And it's it's just it's amazing. Yeah, look look up a trailer for it, Kevin. This is up your street, hundred percent up your street. Uh, I've, I've 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 looked at some pictures, and it actually looks quite cool. Yeah, man, it's man. The watch, art style's watch, weird. Yeah, watch, yeah, watch a video for it though, because the videos where it proper like like shines, seeing how fluid it is and stuff. The pictures just make it look like a little two D game, but the fact that you can move up and down and stuff is really cool. Um, looks like it's Apple Arcade only it though. is Apple Arcade only the reason I didn't recommend it to you Dan is because you don't have any Apple devices <laughs> um, but when you don't want any Apple devices <laughs> I don't care it's the first time ever that, that I could think of that you haven't like been able to like physically can't play a game because you don't have an Apple device like do, do you know what I mean like like with a PS4 for example you could play it on John's stepdad or, or I can give you my PS4 or whatever, and Xbox, you got your PC, you got your PC, you got your Switch, you can pretty much play everything across the board, but this is the first game well, that I've gone to recommend. Can't play VR games. And VR games, I suppose, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's brilliant. I love it. And I'm going to be playing it until cool. I complete it. And between that and Sayonara Wild Hearts, my Apple Arcade purchase is finally worth it. Nice. Yeah. Um, what's the next one? Have I played anything else this week, guys? Have I spoken about anything else? Um, you said you played four new games. So you've got Black Mesa. No, but Bleak about. Sword. Bleak Sword was the fifth. I think that was the fourth. Uh, I don't know, mate. Okay. Oh, and Ori. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, we're good. That's it. That's all I've played this week. <laughs> so I really should have. Re- Honestly, before the podcast, I was like, I'm going to write it down. But then I was like, Nah, I'll, I'll remember them all. It's fine. But apparently not. Apparently, I'm a div. Just do it, do it, Dan, and wing do it. Do it, Dan, and wing it. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not as good though. Um, cool. <laughs> so, should we talk about you? Do uh, you guys can talk about Ori while um, so I can catch a breather, and then we'll talk about. Oh, uh, there's, there's, there's no point talking about the first story. People want to hear about the second story. Yeah, talk about the first one. I want to uh, hear well, Kevin's I, final thoughts. I haven't, I haven't played it this week. I haven't oh, okay. played it this week. Oh. Well, one thing because I I've, I completed it this week. I streamed the last. I streamed on Monday and Tuesday, and then I completed it because I think I just had the last level. And uh, to complete, and Dan Dan was hearing my uh, my frustration. Oh God, your your raging over Mike was the funniest <laughs> thing I've heard in a long time. You were screaming like proper chest screaming at this. Um, but one thing that I don't get. So you know, in I think it was last week, maybe the week before, Dan, you said that you unlocked an ability that lets you dash in the air. Yeah, but then that bit, but Ben was like, "You sure you don't unlock? Yeah, you actually find the ability to dash in the air," which I was under the impression of the same thing because I saw it and I unlocked it, but not once throughout the entire game did I get a dash. Yeah, I don't get that. Don't understand that at all. Ben, did you get a dash when you played the game? Do you remember? No. Okay, so I, it, it wasn't me to just miss something. It was simply just maybe. Like we misread what there's a saying? whole thread on Steam about what the fuck is the <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah. no one knows yeah, what it is there's... oh really oh, okay <laughs> yeah the only thing that I thought was because in the new one there is a dash yes yeah 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 and I thought to myself well, there's a dash in this one maybe they maybe they missed no they wouldn't have missed it because they they, they they put things in the game deliberately to use it for example you have like as soon as you get the dash the only, the only way you can get out of that area is using the dash. And yeah, the only way I, to get out of certain areas is to use the ability they've literally given you there and then. Yeah, I don't know what the air dash is. I mean, okay. there's an entire thread on Steam about it. Maybe they put it in there and forgot to actually put the uh, ability in there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, what what okay, did you think of the game? Yeah, it is exceptional. It is just... 
it does it ticks all the right boxes. There are no bad boxes about Ori. What's the shooting like? What's the shooting like? <laughs> <laughs> actually, if anything, that, wear is, off that, is, that is probably one of the slightly worse things of it. Is the yeah, actual combat Sorry. system is a bit weak. Yeah. Um, yeah, the combat system is weak. Yeah, yeah that's... which is I it's I guess in a way we can say that it improves significantly in the next one. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I mean, story wise, what did you think? Oh no, we can't talk about story because Dan hasn't played it. All right, you know what? Yeah, uh, fine, no. Kev, you loved it, yeah. Yeah. You're gonna take my recommendation seriously from now on, yeah. <laughs> I'll uh, take it with an open mind. Thank you. Hey, good. good result. result. Good, yeah, yeah. Um, fantastic, cool. Let's talk about Will of the Wisps. Very, very, very non-spoilery here because yeah, Dan hasn't outlines. played it and a lot of people might not have played it. All I want to say about it is that it might be the best game ever made. <laughs> um, it's so good. It is insanely good. Like It's like 11 out of 10 currently. Like it does everything that Ori and the Blind Forest does times ten, right? My only issue with it is that there it is. it's a bit on the nose how much it steals from Hollow Knight. Like the the atmosphere is like the same as Hollow Knight. A lot of the enemies feel like they've just been taken out of Hollow Knight and given a new skin. Um Wait. It's... Do they? Yeah, I swear yeah, a lot of them yeah. are just taken from a the lot, first one. A lot of them are from the first one, but a lot of the other ones aren't. A lot of like oh, the, what, the, like, the, like the, the one, mosquito. For example. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I like there's, I there's that. yeah, there's a lot of of stuff, which is a bit like guys. It's come the on. beetle, isn't the beetle taken out? Is that taken out of it? I don't know. It, it it just it feels very Hollow Knight, right? I don't have a problem with that. I I was, I was mulling it over, right? Because I was like. I don't like it when games rip off other games, right? But if you've taken inspiration from it, it's fine. I don't know. I'm struggling because it's yeah. ultimately uh, a good thing because Hollow Knight is a masterpiece, so why not steal from it, you know? But at the same time, I'm a little bit like, ah, you could have come up with new stuff instead of just stealing it from something else. I don't know. Uh, could they, though? It's a side-scrolling platformer Dan, with a you've, focus you've played on Hollow Knight trust me the second you play an hour of Ori you're going to realize how bloody similar to it is yeah but that's this is indie games we're talking about and indie games are generally iterations of old ideas with their own twist put on them I understand Dan Ori's... I understand your point but trust me just you're going to have to trust me here the similarities okay. are ridiculous like um for example do you remember the map guy in Hollow Knight. Oh, yeah, yeah they got that exact same. It's identical. You meet some dude and he's like, oh, come to my shop and buy a map. And then you go to a shop and you, you buy maps off him. And it's like identical. Yeah, that's, that's a classic Metroidvania no, 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 trap. It's can't, not a Hollow Knight Okay, thing. it's really hard to explain, but trust me, when you play it, it is the sim- the similarities are, are in like the feel, the feel of it, the way that the characters are portrayed, the... the um, it's really hard to explain, Dan. You have to just trust okay. me. When right. you play it, you'll right. understand. In, in, I mean, from what I can gather, and the way Ben's saying it, it's almost as if he's if they've they've taken Ori, the first the the main core good bits we like about Ori. They've taken some inspiration and a lot of stuff from Hollow Knights. Yeah, they've put them together. And but they've mixed them very very well, and they've just made the game that much better. Yes, a hundred percent. Yes, but the the issue is is that the things that they're stealing from Hollow Knight are almost carbon copies. That they're, they're not the system of Inspired. yeah the system of buying a map for a game. Yes, I understand that that is a Metroidvania trait. Like that's not fine. Whatever you know, but the way that it's portrayed and done is a carbon copy, like an identical copy of Hollow Knight. Um, the You know the pin system in Hollow Knight where you get all the little pins and you can do like, you know, you uh, equip certain It's a ones. good system. It's a great system. But the page even looks identical to the Hollow Knight page. That's what I mean, as in 
as in they're like carbon copies and not just inspired. What what what? what yeah, page? but you can look look at like battle royale games or first person shooters. If a, there was one person at some point came up with a pinging system, now they all have very very similar pinging systems. Like it's the same thing. Surely, like oh, this is a good idea. It fits really well into a game like this. So let's just take that idea and put it into our game. That kind of that's what happens with indie development. That's yeah, but it's kind not of how indie it development. Ori's Microsoft, man. It's like it's it's. Yeah, I guess. If it was just another indie... Okay, for example, remember the last Indie Direct and they released... They announced that Gleam Light game, whatever it was called, which looked yeah, identical yeah, yeah. to Hollow Knight, yeah. yeah? And everyone ripped it to shreds. That That's kind of where yeah. it's at, is it, in terms of the feel and the... So you you meet loads of characters in this and it almost feels like they got the same voice actors from... Hollow Knight to do the voice acting for all the characters. They do that I weird. I really want to play Hollow Knight soft... now just to really understand how similar it is because yeah. the game is so freaking good, and I don't like the idea that they. No, no, no. I, it's, but it's not necessarily an issue because everything that they're copying, the fundamentals are is that Ori is more of a platformer style game, if that makes sense. Whereas yeah. Hollow Knight is a combat style game. That that's like. They are. They have got enough different between them so that it's not a complete carbon copy. It's just a lot of the things that they did take from Hollow Knight are not taken in a clever, inspirational way. They're taken in a, yeah, we're just gonna nab that straight out of the game and put it in our game. That that's exa- that's what it feels like, and it is a little bit annoying. <laughs> only a little bit. Only a little bit annoying. That's my only issue with it. And I think anyone that has played Hollow Knight extensively, and anyone that how we'll play Ori will see these similarities. Like, yeah. I mean, the the combat system has pretty much been taken out of Hollow Knight as well. The way the combat works now is very much like that Dark Soulsy style, you know, do a couple of attacks, jump over them, dashes and stuff like that. The way that Hollow Knight system works is pretty much the same. But I went into Ori and the second I got a couple of abilities, I was like, oh, this feels just like Hollow Knight. So... But with a, it looks a lot better, obviously. But um, okay, so I'll, I'll I want to talk about two things that were that have like basically my favorite two things about this game so far. One, the time trials. They are sick. They are so good. <laughs> so, so good. So there's a little thing, Dan. But they're, they're, they're basically. It's it's the same as in I think they did it in Assassin's Creed and a few other games that you essentially have a start line. And in a finish line, you have to get from A to B as quick as possible. I think Dying Light did it as well. Ba- basically, they? Kevin is just describing the concept of a race. Well, it... <laughs> <laughs> Dan, you, mean, Dan, you mean a time trial? Yeah, Dan, you, oh, what, you actually time trial? race against... That, that, no, they've oh, been in God, God. Much, you know, games since about pff, maybe 1990. Only, only, no, no, no. You can narrow it down. Only, only games with, like, movement... <laughs> I hate you guys. I hate you so <laughs> I don't much. need to describe what a time trial is. Yes. No. I, I I'm just, sorry. I, you can't say time trial, right? So you got a start line, and then you have to get from A to B within a certain time limit. It's like, yes, Kev, that is what a time trial is. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Either way, they have that, cool. and it's really good, and they're amazing. <laughs> um... <laughs> they also have um, combat trials as well. The like little arena trials, yeah, where you have to kill a few waves what? of enemies. Oh, oh, oh is that, that like a, thing, yeah. is that like a, a combat? Se- yeah, so section basically, where it where starts trial. right, and then wave one will start, and then enemies will spawn, and you have to kill the enemies, and then wave two will start, and you have to kill those enemies, and wave three will start, you have to kill those enemies, and you have to do all that without dying to complete said <laughs> time trial, so uh, combat trial. That's how combat trials work, by the you way. You know what? Some people might not even know this. Yeah, but you could just say a time trial where you have to complete it within a certain time <laughs> you have to say there's a complete start line and you have to get time. from A to B complete what within a certain time <laughs> well, you could just say a time trial it's like a race you go get, you go there some people might not know some people might not know you don't uh, know that okay sorry I'm not just explaining it for Dan I'm just explaining it for the world okay Episode so you can shove your trials. sarcastic comments up your pee hole <laughs> and the other one is is it Moki Moki whoever that those little Oh yeah, little, little cat uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I they like I, I've been pondering as to get a tattoo for ages. As soon as I saw that, 
I'm getting it. I, they are so cute. <laughs> they are so amazing. They are just the most adorable thing. Yeah, ever Charlotte, seen like um, within about five minutes of meeting Mocky, said that we want to get a cat called Mocky now. Yeah, okay, yeah. there you go. I'm going to get a tattoo of Mocky, so... <laughs> Yeah, that, I mean, it's it's great. There's a, it's it's just brilliant. It's a phenomenal. It's just a, <laughs> it's just it's, it's a masterpiece, man. Like, Ori in the Blind Forest was a masterpiece, and I wasn't even aware that a game could improve that Get much better. on an, on a, something that's already a masterpiece. Like, it's it's like for example, for me, The Last of Us is like my favorite game of all time, and it's like. How is the Last of Us two going to be better than that? It could well be better than that. I don't know, but like, it's this similar sort of thing where Ori was one of my favorite games of all time, and I cannot believe that they've succeeded in making it as much better as it is. Yeah. So Dan, please, for the love of Christ, get on Blind Forest so you can play this because you need to be on this journey with us. Just think about it. Oh, well, There's a massive frog in it as well. There's a <laughs> massive frog in it as well. Yeah. I like I do like frogs. Frogs are brilliant. It's not named frog, frog or something, death, isn't it? Um, and then we have the big one, the one that people have been looking forward to for ages. Yeah. Call of Duty Battle Royale. Warzone, yeah. The Warzone thing. Um, from what I can gather, I'm the only one that seems to like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me. <laughs> preface this by saying I am really into Apex at the minute I, 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 I love Apex I just got to plat boy and um <laughs> <laughs> we'd flex but okay <laughs> um, but I that that is where a lot of this non love comes from I think if I wasn't playing another battle royale I reckon I would enjoy this a lot more and I, I reckon I might enjoy this in a few months' time or something when I'm not into Apex. It's just really hard to play when I know that I have Apex to play. <laughs> I think if we were playing this at the time a month or two ago where we were playing Ground War quite mm. a lot, I think it would have slotted in really well. But yeah, I get my, 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 like My two main things that I just don't like with it is the map size is extraordinary. Extraordinary. I just, I just, is that a word? <laughs> no, it's not a word. Ben. Are you sure? Uh, see, I'm going to put this as an episode title, Ex- um, but I don't even know how to spell it. <laughs> Kev, how do you spell extraordinary? <laughs> just give it a go. I don't know. Extraordinate. Extraordinate. <laughs> is it not a... Extortionate. That's the I one think... I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't make sense either in this context it that makes no sense I thought, I thought it just means it's ridiculous just so it's just massive extraordinary maybe maybe who knows it's something extra who knows <laughs> it's something, something extra, extra. <laughs> he tried he tried to use England but um, it didn't do very well yeah England <laughs> he tried to use yeah, England England didn't come too too well with me right now um it, yeah it, in my opinion it's just too much and the See, I, and I disagree. It, it makes... I, I think it it has it 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 it, it, it come on, Ben. Words. <laughs> um, it fills a gap that that is was needed because if you just made another one hundred or sixty or eighty person battle royale, or whatever, it would have just been the the same thing again. But, no, but by making this, it's made a this... massive like warfare thing, which is exactly what they needed. Like, like a mix the... between ground war and battle royale. The, the, the core fundamentals of this game is so good. I mean, they, we, we love the. I mean, actually, they they did put essentially a one v one in the game, and we love our one two v twos and three v threes. But it's just, I don't know. I, one thing I think what annoys me with it is that. The sound on the game. The sound is me. fucked, man. The sound. The, I've never known. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've never known a game that that they can be miles away from you, shoot a bullet, and it will still sound like next to you. But they can walk up next to you or sprint and do like a, 
you know, they could be they, they could sound a horn, ride a pogo stick, and you'd never hear them. <laughs> yeah, it's it's bonkers, man. Like, I mean, it's not just us, by the way. I was watching a shroud stream last night. Stupid. Yeah, I, I've heard everyone say it. And everyone hates. Yeah, ridiculous. he was just like. Uh, so I think someone else at like Summit said, oh, um, I think they're just over that hill. And Trout was like, nah, that, they, they, they could be over that hill. They could be a mile away. It all sounds the same. Like there's no, there's no sort of distance variable when it comes to sound, which is a massive issue, especially for something of this scale. Like you really, yeah. really need to know what is happening with the sound. But I think it's we should really talk about Dan, talk about the new things. Go. You haven't said much. <laughs> um, new things. So it's got a respawn system, which is quite mm. cool. If one of your teammates dies, um, well, so, so first of all, it's through teams of three. Uh, you can choose to fill your squad up, so you can party with some friends and fill the squad up two three, or you can choose not to, so you can actually jump in solo, which is kind of cool. Um, but you'd still be playing against other teams of three and two and one and everything else it's all mixed in basically which is not what i thought it was going to be i thought there was going to be separate games for one man solos duos but they did they did scrap that remember in um black ops 4 battle royale remember towards the end of its lifespan they did scrap the duos and solos yeah i figured that was because of the player base dropping Mm. um i i get why they do it but that's how it works anyway but there is a respawn system whether you play solo or not uh, and what happens is when you die the first time, you get chucked into the gulag, uh, you know, dark, dingy prison, and you're on a walkway around one of the shower sections. And one by one, you get paired up with a random player, and you have a little one v one. Yeah. So, so all the, play- down all the, the players that die go to the gulag first, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And you can watch all these fights happening and below you, and you can interact <laughs> with each other and throw rocks down into the fight, which is kind of cool. And honestly, the man, the system is, gets a free respawn. Yeah, the system is fantastic. It's so good. <laughs> it is. It's so it's tense. So good. Like when when you when your teammates are alive and they're waiting for you, and you're you know chatting over comms, and you're saying, "Look, I'm, I've got my fight coming up now," yeah. and you know you kind of and then, cheer and then each other suddenly, on and you win the fight, you know, and you die, and they might still be in that fight, and then you can just like rain yeah. down on them, like, "I'm coming back, boys. Don't worry." Yeah, <laughs> it's it, brilliant. It drops you in with a parachute directly over wherever your team yeah. is. This is absolutely amazing. Which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. This is really cool. like Call of Duty needed some fresh ideas to stay relevant and they have delivered, man. Like the the fresh ideas yeah. in this are so good. The Gulag system is one of the smartest systems I've seen in a in a battle royale game for yeah. a long, long time. Like And it's not unbalanced. It works if you're by yourself, which is really yeah. cool. Um there's you only get one chance to do it. And the other thing is you can buy your teammates back with the money system mm-hmm. in the game, which you find laying around the map. There are little shot points, which are obviously hot points for combat. But they've but managed to balance that you really well. can buy well. a variety of things. like, it's not that yeah. easy to get money. You know? Not that easy. It's quite easy. Not that can easy. Be. I mean, but you it's, have, like, it's more and stuff the distance little. between you and where those shops mm-hmm. are and the fact that they're probably going to be watched by other players. So it's kind of a high risk, high reward sort mm-hmm. of thing. Um, it's got the armor system. I don't think the armor system's that bad. I think it works as well as it can work in a game that's got such fast time to kill. One thing um, that I I I think I've figured out is that if you get into a fight with someone and you know uh, uh, you both slug it out and you beat them, all your armor is depleted at that point. Another team yeah. could come around the corner, and although your health has gone up. Because the armor plates are so slow and they're so limited, the chances that you're going to win that next fight are basically zero to none. Because if you have armor, you're 100% beating the other person. That's often the case with any third teaming situation in any battle royale, though. No, no, it is. I mean, you compare it to Apex. I still feel like with Apex, you have a chance of getting a few bits of health back. Or even, even if you pick... I mean... You you pick up someone else's armor and you get their armor like you you, you get a a plus two armor, whereas in this system, one getting armor plates as it is is so difficult, and two, if you have armor versus someone with no armor, you are literally there's there's no chance there's there's zero chance even even if you're probably one of the best people in the world versus someone who's who's awful you're still not going to win unless you have a bloody yeah, but that's, that's yeah, standard across I all agree battle with royale games don't it like actually i don't think it is yeah. i feel like apex you 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 do have a chance 
Yeah, no, but you have a chance because you you heal your armor up. Yeah, if, but yeah, if, you, if you're if have no armor you in Apex or any, and you're against someone with purple armor, it's the same thing. They have double your health, like more than double your health because um, armor resistance is higher. Like, like it's it's exactly the same thing. Yeah, okay, okay, but then but then in in Apex, at least you have the opportunity to get armor back because they they it's spread out and people have ha, usually have a lot of armor. Whereas in this game, armor is so difficult to find that even if you kill someone, I don't think it's that difficult. I mean, I mean, the amount of, the amount of times that I kill someone and they they have no armor plates and I've lost all my armor, so I'm walking around with no armor. It's just yeah, I don't know. I I like it. I think the complaints that people had about the last one, blackout, and the oh, armor they've being definitely o- fixed OP. It from that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they've definitely fixed it. And also because of the way the map design is and the size and scale of everything and the fact that there's so many different fights going on because there's 150 people. Like, I played a quick solo game the other day, and there was this dude sniping at this other team from a distance, um, and I literally, I just dropped him with my pistol, and I was like, shit, I'm not going to take this guy, he's got a gold AK on him, and he's got this big old sniper. So I literally crouched all the way behind him, and did the old execution move on him, <laughs> oh, and because wait, of the voice comms, I heard him, yeah, yeah, I heard him scream in fear down the comms just as I killed him, <laughs> like, actually jumped out of his skin, and then suddenly I had a full loadout, he had armor plates, he had the dope sniper and gold weapons and yeah. that got me into the final circle and that's all it took so the shift of balance is really quite fast in this game and I, I like that I like that there's no way for one person to have like level 3 gold armor and gold kit and you know all the best weapons and you having no way of tipping that balance I like that that's possible Yeah. that no matter what you've got it's quite easy to find the weapon and take somebody out because it's relatively easy to kill someone mm. and take all their stuff like it's not i think i think it yeah, is, it is very well forth. balanced like surprisingly well balanced for a call of duty game because they've, they've always had issues of balance and loads of aspects in the past and um there is one thing that is completely ridiculous in my opinion where oh, you God, know here we go. I, we've never done this but only because i found it out on stream yesterday but you know if all three of you buy a uav and use it you get advanced uav and you can see the exact position of every single person on the map oh my god no way yeah like the exact position, the way they're facing, like it's, I, so it's, it's, it's ridiculous. like a blackbird. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I have an issue with all the kill streak upgrades. I don't think they're, they should be. Yeah, I don't think, I don't I think, think you should needed. be able to have airstrikes. No, I feel like the game don't solid need airstrikes. Myself, don't need UAVs. Yeah. That's that kills it for me. Um, I don't like that you can just buy a UAV and track everybody. I think the mini map works fine with gunfire and red dots appearing from time yeah. to time. It's just, it's OP, man. Like, me and Kevin were in a fight uh, in an airfield. I was out in the open. Suddenly, I heard an airstrike coming. There was no warning that it was coming, just the noise. And I was like, yeah, well, I'm fucked, yeah. aren't I? Like, there's nothing. Yeah, I because this, this this random person didn't have a gun. I guess, in a way, if, if you haven't got a gun to fight someone with a sniper, you can just pop out and put an airstrike in the red. But I, it's such so a cheap OP, like, Yeah, it's, it's the same thing as that, 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 that they put RPGs in every bloody Yeah, RPGs need to be taken out of yeah. that, man. Honestly, they are ridiculous. Like, they should be in it, but not as frequently no, as you see them. Like, every, I see at least one RPG a game to pick up. And I, I mean, a lot of games I die straight away, so that's saying something. I, I see way more yeah. than that. Mm. I feel like they're in every Yeah, it's ridiculous. And, and they're pretty much a guaranteed kill, even with full armor. You could kill someone with one, yeah. just shoot them at the floor beneath their feet. You don't even have to hit them. Like It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, and they, I, yeah, they, they should be really rare items, and they should maybe have like lock on ones that just lock on vehicles, yeah, vehicles yeah. or airstrikes or whatever, and that yeah. might work. It's another thing that is, cool. that that I, I don't like either is that they the, the customization of your own guns. No, I was really, just about to say that. I thought that was brilliant. Really? Wait, 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 you don't like that you can't customize your gun at all? No, the, the loadout system. Like, I think it's great. What the only the only thing you can do I is pick up a gun that they give you. Yeah, uh, it's brilliant you, because you, you, you customise the guns. So your guns. stupid looting crap. It, it's ju- it, it, it's just back to the game. You're just playing the game. You run around, you find guns and shit, and then you just run around trying to find a bit of money to get loadouts and stuff. Like it, it just works so much better. Because I like, even it, I'm not sure. I would I would quite like to find red dot sites and sciences yeah. and stuff. No, like I don't around. know, man. I would like, like to it, be able to customise. Yeah, but the, the second you can do that is the second that you spend. 10 15 minutes each game just running around into loads of buildings trying to find the bloody item that you want like it, but that's the thing there's so much loot that how many m13 like the basic assault <laughs> yeah. rifles do you see every game the mp7s yeah 
like four in every building, I swear. And it's like you could easily just have a couple in each building and then dot the occasional attachment. Even just attachments a red dot site, man. Red dot sites go so far in these games. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Like, nearly every single game you play, the first thing you ever want is a gun and a red dot site. Uh, because I I, I, dis, I disagree. I, I think I, I think it gets rid of a lot of the all the boring around. shit in in battle royale games. Yeah, and that's the, that's where it shines. Is that you could you you could, you basically start playing within a few minutes because you get everything you need to get apart from buying station stuff. But that's more late game stuff. Like well, I just think you yeah it, it, like even in Apex, which is such a fast paced, you know crazy ass action game how many games do you spend just running around being like I need a shield I need to find this shield you know I, I need a better shield than this I need I need this scope I need this extended mag I need this hop up I need this ammo I need I these so. shields yeah. it's just it's tedious it's unnecessary and it's boring and I think that is that is part of the reason why this game is, is really good and really quick and just feels proper like yeah let's get on it straight away you know, and you know that at the start of the game, no one's going to have loadouts. You know that at the start of the game, everyone's going to have basic weapons, and towards the end of the game, everyone's going to have loadouts. That's just how it works. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. What I don't like is the looting system in itself. I don't like how weapons ex- bodies explode with loot. I'd, I'd rather have a menu like in Apex. Um, I don't like having to position myself to try and pick up a particular item when they're all stacked up on the yeah, floor. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Uh, yeah. That's annoying. And I also hate, um, Kevin, you had this problem yesterday, that the default ping button is alt and the default inventory button is yeah. tab. And we all know what happens when you press those two <laughs> buttons at the same time. Yeah, the, the, pinging, so that's the, pinging, really the, the pinging is horrendous. It, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's awful. I mean, it's terrible. Considering pinging, if anything, it should be getting better since it was first introduced. Mm. This is by far the one of the worst pinging systems yeah. that, that exists out there. Yeah. The only thing it does differently is locks onto the thing that you've pinged. So if you ping a vehicle, it'll follow it around for a bit. And if you ping a player, it'll follow them around for yeah, a okay, bit. Yeah, fair enough. Kind but of then, okay, but, I guess. D- but it's... No. Yeah, it's... it's and they also, good. they're opaque. Yeah. They sit on the screen when you're aiming at a doorway and you've just got this big old yellow star yeah. in front of you. And oh, it just won't God, go away. The, the only way it goes away is if you're <laughs> facing directly at it. So... Oh, it does. Yeah, yeah. Know, so if you're facing that. like yeah. literally like crosshair in the in the middle of this thing, then it will fade out like oh, it does okay. in standard. Well, at least they've done that. But That's but it's still really it annoying when it because the issue is you have got the the pings are massive. They're bloody giant, man. Yeah. And if it's yeah. it could be blocking half of a freaking building, and if you're not just not happening to look, be looking directly at your ping, and someone you know pokes out the window of a sniper behind your ping, and you're not looking at it, then they then they've suddenly got a bloody massive red yeah. thing above them in front of them and you can't see them out of the corner of your eye or anything you know it, it, it's it's horrible and like it's not done very well at all apex does it very very well and i can see why they tried to steal it but my god have they done a bad job of stealing it <laughs> i think one other thing worth mentioning with this game is although personally i'm having some computer issues with this game and i'm sure a few people are um based on everything that i've read and everything that I've seen online, all the general opinions of it, the the progress that they've made with the engine and the optimizations that they've made are phenomenal. Mm. Like the the performance increases from day one to now are crazy, um, considering the the visuals haven't really changed that much, and the fact that it's completely cross platform and even on the base like PS4, this thing runs at 1080p, pretty much 60 frames consistently and looks this good. And the fact that they can have 150 people in this huge, huge. map with this so map much is variety ridiculous. in it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that is really, really impressive. Like, genuinely astounding. They have put a lot of work into that. this, man. Like, yeah. I haven't played that much of it, but watching that stream last night and just watching, you know, Shroud do his thing where he just runs around the entire map killing every pillock. And um, every... the. Just looking at the scale of this map is just incredible. Like, did it make you want to play? It did. More? It really did. Yeah, yeah. And I, I do want to play more. And I think I will. I will get into it more. I just. I think I struggled with the idea that because there's so many people, you're gonna. It's gonna be a lot harder to win. And in previous battle royale games, or in Apex, or in Blackout, Black Ops Four Blackout mode thing. 
you strive to get as many wins as possible, if that makes sense. In this one, I guess it's more about just the moment-to-moment gameplay and not winning because it's, Maybe. it's you're not you're not going to win many games of 150 people in this over. No, like, it's just not going to happen. when we came yeah. second. We did come second. Yeah. Well, exactly. You did come second in like your second or third yeah. game, and I've I've come in top five a few times. Yeah, but Dan, you're not... actually god at this game. Somehow, yeah, so. somehow. Yeah. I'm really not. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, right. That's enough Warzone chat. It looks yeah. really good. We should really try and play the plunder mode this week as well, so we can talk about that. Yeah, let's do that. Cool. Yeah. Um. Any other games? Anyone? Um. No. Obviously, we played Apex, but we don't need to yeah. talk about that. And we've played. I think that's it. Yeah. I think the only other thing I've played is Crypt of the Necrodancer. I've been playing that nice. a bit more. Um, I'm loving it. I so love, good. I love, love, love the yeah, soundtrack man, in that game. Yeah, man, so good. And the the more I get into it, the the more levels I manage to get through. And it's hard, it hard but yeah. the more levels you get through, the better the soundtrack gets. And it's like, oh, I just want to hear yeah, the next yeah. song. I just want to keep playing. <laughs> yeah, the soundtrack is like part of the addiction, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Uh, anyway, definitely. cool. Kev. All right, so it's the happy pickler's time. A happy pickler, you, you're taking the spotlight this week because you're back. Wonder where you went. Apparently, you were gone for a bit and you caught up. So, just said, "Hello, pickles." Hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome back. We miss you. We did miss you very much. Um, well, where do I start? I have to catch up on weeks of good stuff. Not sure what that means, but. Yes. Um, I could. I mean, it is good stuff. It's a good podcast. I suppose pretty, yeah, pretty black and white there, Kev. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I have, I have to, to catch, catch up, up on, on weeks, weeks of good stuff. good stuff. What doesn't make sense yeah, about that? No, I, I don't is, know. It, is it too? I don't know what it's... Is it too extraordinary? <laughs> Oh, you know what, yeah? Oh, man, you got What's ruined. been said about bullying me on this? And now look at it. <laughs> Whatever. You're bringing it upon yourself. Maybe. Mate. It still doesn't make sense to me, but we'll keep going. I could talk for ages, but I know how to, how you struggle with long emails, so I'll try and keep it brief. Oh, <laughs> Kevin got wrecked twice. <laughs> Make them as long as you want. It gives me, you know, I, I can plan it a bit better. Yeah, Kevin needs some English lessons anyway, so put Probably. put some extraordinary <laughs> words in there. Cool, and that's it again for me. I'll uh... <laughs> go on. Uh, it says, I was amused to hear your flimsy reasoning behind finding COD fun. <laughs> I would still be interested Ooh. to know whether the designers planned it for it to be fun. I understand yes. they would hope it was a game people would want to play, but would they expect gamers to be laughing hysterically? Yes. Yes. <laughs> there is no that's point a, making a game that is not fun unless you're making the longing, apparently. Um, <laughs> well, you no, know, you said oh, the no, other no, day no. that... The, the, argu- the argument mm-hmm. is, is that some games don't need to be fun. Some games are, you know audio visual things and story based things and point to click adventures and stuff and whatnot but when you're playing a game that is pvp you know player versus player and you're shooting people and yeah it's just no good if it's not fun you know no i mean look look at look at paintball paintball's been going for years and people don't play paintball to go and get hurt and have a horrible, <laughs> miserable time. They play paintball because they're interacting with other people and they're all playing games with a set you know, boundary of rules. But they're running around and they're having fun and yeah, there's some wins and losses and risks involved, but at the same time, it's, it's about the engagement with other players and the test of your skills and it's, it's about the interaction and when you're interacting with all those different players in that virtual setting it is fun and silly things happen mm. and funny things happen and you know like hearing that guy scream the other day on the microphone <laughs> and have like a mini heart attack was one of the funniest <laughs> things ever I think and, that's, that's key yeah, though is uh, that games sometimes are fun because of situations not because of setting well that's that's what I mean by the online yeah. aspect of it it's about the engagement with other yeah. players it's not about the fact that you're in a war zone per se it's it's about you the fact that you're sharing that with other people just like horror movies they're not nice experiences but the adrenaline rushes you get from it and the the, the you know 
the energy that comes out of it that part mm. is fun you know people go to horror ho- horror houses what they called haunted houses and stuff like that and people go on roller coasters and all of those things it's the same are yeah. fun it's the same with taking heroin and drugs <laughs> <laughs> yes i suppose yeah. it's, it's it's the rush it's, yeah. fun. it's fun it's fun <laughs> But yeah, anyway. no, I definitely agree. Yeah. I definitely agree. It cool. is that. Um, I don't understand why it's so exciting when games are more realistic. <laughs> when you when uh, you make mention of a bullet hitting a wall and the way it shutters is very lifelike, etc. Ultimately, whatever you are playing will not be <laughs> etc. ETC. Okay, etc. Sorry. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell, man. Ultimately, <laughs> whatever you are playing will not be remotely realistic, no matter the game, as you are sitting at home pushing buttons. Okay, Happy Piccolo. <laughs> we'll, p- we'll put our opinions aside. <laughs> that was really... I think that was very aggressive. Oh, was that it? Yeah, that uh, was I, it, yeah. It was, it was just basically um, saying that, that we're idiots because we're just sitting at home pushing buttons. Well, that's, you know, our side job is, is that, completely is that ruined, not, isn't it, really? Is um, that not, like, kind of what yeah, you're saying? We should all quit. That's it, guys. Podcast <laughs> yeah. is over. This is the last episode. Thank you for being with us on this journey, but games can't be fun. <laughs> they can't be realistic. <laughs> so <laughs> we must leave yes. this behind us. We will, uh... that's, not, that's almost like saying, you know, you shouldn't be sitting at home trying to get realistic games. You should be out there shooting people. <laughs> watching I mean, there's, 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 do we know if this person watches... TV or movies or television or reads book. Reads well, book. we definitely know that they don't play games. <laughs> read singular book. Well, clearly, yeah. <laughs> but if they read, if they read book, then they <laughs> <laughs> then read book. They can't. It can't possibly be fun, or it can't possibly be realistic or emotionally engaging because all they're doing is discerning words <laughs> on a page. You know, or if they're watching TV, then it can't possibly be engaging or fun or realistic even if it's like a war movie that's depicting something like that it can't possibly be realistic because it's just you know what a few months ago the happy pickler mentioned that she played ghouls and ghosts maybe she's just maybe she just has that that image of video games in her head maybe (laughs) maybe you you know you should try and play i don't know she's lost about like the 1990s yeah, get with the times, man. Yeah. Gosh, to to give her the benefit of the doubt, though, I I get we're we're talking about you know the example she gives about a bullet hitting the wall next to you and the concrete crumbling onto your head and all that. In a trying to put myself in her shoes, having that explained, it's it is a bit of a weird thing to try and imagine that as realistic because it's yeah, it is just pixels but on the screen we are talking, and it isn't actually landing next to The context head. of that conversation but was think, physics engines though. That's what we were specifically yeah, talking about a bullet true, hitting actually. a wall yeah. being really, really amazing. No, we're talking about the fact that new physics engines can accomplish that sort of thing, which means that it's getting closer to realism. And Yeah, I think it comes back to the, phys- the, the physics, the, um, the adrenaline side of it in that context. Mm. In that particular example, it's like if even in a game now, if we're running around in a field in, say, Apex Legends or something, and you hear, like, a sniper bolt whiz past your head, suddenly your heart skips a beat, and you're like, oh, God, just get out of the open and run into this building. And yet, you know it's not real. Of course you do. You know it's not actually happening to you. There's nothing... There's no delusion there. But in the context of the game and trying to win and all of the effort that you've put in, it does add tension to yeah. it. Just like a jump scare in a horror movie adds tension mm. and atmosphere to it. And when you add things like scenery crumbling around you and the impacts being more realistic, it does make you feel a bit more scared about getting hit and a bit more which is, which is where frightened and a bit more cautious it. and it puts you into the game a bit more. And yeah, is, You know what? There's a perfect example I saw the other day of someone who... Um, he tried and tested this um, map on a game. Uh, it was it was a, a racing game, and he went around and round and round in this car, and he'd never driven a car in his life. So he then basically perfected the map on the game. This is, and when he went into driving a car, he he had he had a few lessons in terms of how to actually drive a car, and how to you know you know it, it, he didn't just jump into a car and race this this who was apparently like a, a professional driver racer and 
he beat him because he knew the map better. Yeah. He knew the race better. And there's a lot of examples of that. Like one of the, the top snipers in the US military, I think, um, is an avid, well, was an avid, or it still is, I guess, an avid Call of Duty player. I think we need to be careful with that comparison, though, because that can have connotations that aren't accurate, like how maybe people will take that as Call of Duty or war games inspire you to commit <laughs> real war. If, if people act- want to see it as that, then fine. But, I mean, there is there is still the fact of... That's quite it's... simple. That's that's just about reaction times and maybe a little bit of desensitization, just a touch. But I think it's that's more about reaction times and just getting familiar with spotting things that are far away and that kind of stuff. Imagine if that um I don't know if it's... that that kid that we spoke about last week who was playing too much GTA when he got into his dad's car he was driving around. He's actually just an he's just a Drifting, yeah he's just yeah. Going straight in and he just knew what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so move on. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Go for it. Said, so, are there any updates on the man who? was banned from his FIFA account. Has he found a way to get around his ban? He's streaming something else now, isn't he? Yeah, so, um, initially, he was just told by EA that he can make a new account, basically. That his his ban of... His name of Kurt0411, I think it was. Um, It's just gone. He can't use it on anything. He just makes a new account. So, he made a new account... He was streaming it, and then over the the night when he was going to stream in the morning, it got banned again. Um, he then has gone on to, I guess, FIFA's biggest rival, even though it's not even remotely close to it, um, being Pez, and he actually outstreamed the biggest FIFA streamer by playing Pez. No one watches Pez. No one likes Pez. That's ridiculous, man. But he out. I'm sorry, it took me ages to realise what you're talking about. I was thinking of those little Pez dispensers oh. <laughs> that have the little mouths on them and the sweets uh, that come out and you fill them up really from fun. the bottom. Uh, the little different. Just you know, no uh, Pro Evolution Soccer. Um, right. Maybe. Yeah. No one. No, no one watches it. Um, but he managed to get more viewers. I think he he got his highest ever view account playing <laughs> playing that game. It's quite funny. Um, I don't think he's got around his ban. I don't. I. I from the sound, he's, he's not it, getting around it just his ban. Seems, that, no, yeah. it just seems as if yeah, just like you know what, you're a knob. Just go he go to another platform. Let let Konami deal with you now. I can't bother to deal with you anymore. Konami, the makers of yeah. Pez. Um. Next one. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the sales figures for the company who is giving refunds. Uh, I can see... Talking about GOG, I yeah, guess. I think so. Uh, I can see all points of view. I do think it's true that people will buy items they will not necessarily buy it as long as they had the option to get their money back if they don't like it. This may mean they buy it and keep more games, but I also see that people could take advantage of this option. Dan is optimistic the man, uh, that mankind is not so mean. Ben is obviously less optimistic. I don't think you can relate this... T- to going to an amusement park and asking for a refund if you didn't enjoy the rides. They are different mediums. How and can you not relate it to that? It's the same thing. Don't care that it's a different medium. If you uh, experience something and you didn't enjoy it, but it all depends ask for a on their... like it's the same thing. It doesn't matter what the medium is. Yeah, but it, it depends. I mean, like if you go into a movie and you watch it and you don't like it, I'm sure there's terms and conditions when you buy that movie. You can't get a refund. Yeah, and then that's that's my argument with games. If you buy a mo- buy a game, play it, didn't like it, you can't just refund it if you play the entire game. I think anyway, it's different if you're, we it's spoke about this for physical. ages last yeah, week. True, yeah. We're never ever going to agree on this. I think that it's a bad thing, and Dan thinks it's a good thing, and Kevin <laughs> is is lukewarm in between. Aww. In terms of sales figures, though, the, the company before they did this, was not massively profitable, but they were profitable. I think it's so more seeing sales figures of the individual like... developers on it. That, that's that's going to be the key thing. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I'm sure we'll says... find out in a few months' time or yeah. so. Uh, I'll leave it there for this week. Some of us have jobs to do. <laughs> uh, Excuse me? <laughs> there was one other point. I'm so sorry to hear that Ben's butt 
is not not as good as we necessarily think it is. She sent another email saying that that was supposed to be butt, as in like bum, it's bum, T- tushy. So don't but I don't understand the context. What? <laughs> I have no idea what she's talking about. No, why? It's a weird <laughs> one, isn't it? <laughs> Can you uh, clarify that in your next email, please? And I'll have you know that please. my butt is very well, nice. Wh- thank you. <laughs> Why, why are we commenting on Ben's butt? <laughs> Maybe we said something in the previous episode, I can't remember, but yeah. Um, anyway, I have loved the last few weeks catching up with you all and looking forward to you to Monday, your ever happy pickler. She does have a next another email that she came in with with a question, yeah. which I think, if I can remember off the top of my head, it was, have I we can, ever had I a can... crush on a gaming character? Uh, there's more to the email than that. Um, oh, is it? Okay. Do you want me to read it out? It. Yeah, go for it. That's okay. I am indeed back on dot com. Yes. As I just oh, thought. Oh, okay, yeah. If something else, I uh, just <laughs> thought of something else I wanted to mention. Why do game manufacturers release games that are not tried and tested? You frequently oh, yeah, mention you that they need to tweak and polish a game. That's an, um, that's an interesting question, and it is the cause of a lot of dismay within the uh, gaming community because I'm... But, dude, but the thing is they do try and test these games but... It's but they don't when test people... them enough is the issue. Yeah, okay but but the problem is is that people do different every single person does things completely different meaning that they might go into places that they're not meant to go to and in that way you find a bug or a glitch because the people that are testing it, they're probably not going into these places that you think, well, they're never going to go over there. It's just there for good looks, almost. But that's exactly what testers do. They 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 go to the places where people are not expected to go. They, they try and jump against every wall. They try and crouch against every surface. But there's, 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 there's only they try and break it in every way they so can. so much places that they can go with. I mean, imagine if you were doing that for something like Monster Hunter. How big that place is. Yeah, that, that, this yeah, is. They, they'd need a massive. But this is group. the issue, right? Is that people talk about games being finished unreleased now, but the reasoning for that is that games are a lot more complicated now, with so many different, you know, hundreds of thousands of possible things that could happen in it, and the only way you, is it's pretty much impossible to release a completely polished finished game without there being some bugs in it, right? Because games are so much more extraordinary now and um <laughs> the, the the only way to really do it in a successful way is to release it to the mass market so that essentially you have the mass market testing it for you because you need that yeah. many people to be able to test this for you you're never going to discover all yeah. of these bugs before a game gets released well like hundreds of thousands of combinations is is generous there's probably millions of possible combinations if you think about how big Horizon Zero Dawn is, for example, and you need to test every possible tree, for example. There might be a tree which has glitched its physics somehow and you can crouch into it and fall underneath the map, for example, right? There's thousands of trees on that game and, you know, thousands of possible, hundreds of ways you can go around each tree. You know, you could you know, you have to try jumping yeah. into each possible angle of the tree. You have to try crouching into each possible angle. You have to try sprinting into it. You have to try sliding into it. To, yeah. there, there is millions of combinations and it is impossible unless you have the mass market playing your game. That, and that's that's why yeah. it's done like that. The The odds of even like a thousand trained expert testers finding a bug in a game that big before the mar- the mass market of say 10 million players is like yeah. minimal they can find certain things and they know how to test certain things in a certain way you know, um, they have a process for that there's a there's a perfect example yeah of um there was a speed runner or a, like a speed run of um a mario game and Basically, I think it's. I think this was live streamed, or something happened where someone managed to make a glitch happen where they skipped a massive portion of it, and they oh, were like, yeah, oh, this, yeah. is, "This is going to be like the next big thing, yeah." But this has only ever happened once ever. They've they've they've, they've tested it. They've tried it. They've even gone into the in-game coding yeah. to try and find it. And they they can't do it. This, they they, they yeah. can't this replicate whatever. This happened. was Mario sixty four, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 that, that, and that's what they I mean. can't make it happen. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Mario 64, 
all things considered, in comparison to new games, is a lot simpler. Like, a mm. lot simpler in terms of the um, the scale of it, you know? There is so much that can go wrong with games. Just, it's impossible. It is literally impossible. And, and I'm not saying, I'm not, obviously, this is us explaining it to the happy pickler, but so it's not me getting annoyed with, with her. It, it's, it does frustrate me when people say that people shouldn't release un, unfinished products because they don't clearly don't understand how the process works, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Um, there's also, yeah, it does. The, the, there's also the, the factor of the publishers having a lot of control mm. over the developers. Yeah. So if, if a game studio has a deadline and the, it's being funded by their publisher, their publisher says to them, you have to release it by this deadline, finished or not. The, the developers, the people that make the game, don't have a say mm. in that. And a lot of the time, they'll find issues within development, often towards the end of development when they're putting everything together. And they either won't have time to fix it before release, so they'll release what they call a day one patch, um, or they'll have to fix it later on with a bit more feedback from, from the community. Uh, or they'll have to delay the game. And if they don't do that, then often that comes back to bite both the developer and the publisher, and it can have some, some pretty bad consequences. Yeah, yeah. So there's that whole element of the industry as well. It's not just studios not wanting to finish the game. The people that make the games... I genuinely think want them to be in a good state before anybody plays them. They don't, you know, you don't want to. If you if you're painting a picture, you don't want to get it halfway through it and then go. You know what? I'm just going to show it to everybody now. I'm I'm, I'm done with it. I'm just going to mm. let everybody see my unfinished piece of work. Nobody wants that. It's just that they're not really given much yeah. choice with, with yeah, the way the industry works. Yeah, it's resource management is another thing as well. Like having a thousand testers on a game, it's not cheap. It's it's a tedious yeah. job. It's not the sort of thing that people want to do. It's it's like you're not game testing it as in would you like to review our game for us? It's not like that. You're not just sitting there playing through the game. You get given a portion of the game and they say break it. That's basically how it works. So you have to pay yeah. these people money. And there's a lot of money to spend when you it just makes more sense to discover these. As long as you uh, you have to test it to a certain extent to make sure there's no proper game breaking glitches, you know, where like yeah. I don't know, it wipes your save halfway through or something. That would be that would be yeah. awful. Yeah, Seen that yeah. Before. But yeah. in terms of little glitches and bugs where you fall through terrain and things like that, it really doesn't matter, man. Like you'll you'll find them in everything. If you want if you want epic games, you're gonna well, have epic software. glitches as well. So. It's software, and that's the same with all software. Even Windows still has bugs, yeah. and you know there is yeah. there are still communities of people that are out there hacking and finding exploits and finding holes in every major piece of mm -hmm. software. No matter how long it's been in development, there's no perfect, unbreakable yeah. system, and these are all just systems, yeah. and sometimes they'll fall and apart. And then the next question goes on to um, uh, also, what is a beta? Is it different from a demo? Not really, no. It's kind of the same thing. Um, yeah. I think it's just more of a uh, usually word. yeah so it's just you, a lot of the time it's more uh, multiplayer focused games are called beta so the the definition of a, of a beta test there's, a, there's alpha tests which is basically testing the concept rather than the product and then there's the beta test which comes after the alpha test and I think the key thing with a beta test is that it's testing done by somebody who isn't the developer mm. So it has to be put out into the market or to a testing company to be classified as a beta test. Yeah. Um, that's that's the kind of definition. And, of, and of I, I guess like a demo is more of like the full game being released, but then you only get a snippet of it. Demo is more for marketing. Yeah. Beta is more for yeah. testing. Um, both both are for both, but that's kind of the orientation of the, it. The, in terms There's, of timing, it's like you said, alpha quite early on beta maybe fairly early on but like the game's still in development is beta and then yeah. demo is pretty much when the game is ready to release and it's just to get people hyped that that's that's the yeah. idea and they still even after a demo they'll often tweak things and change things based on yeah. feedback but it, it should you should expect that the game is in a pretty playable state by the point there's a demo um and the other thing worth highlighting is early access, because that's quite a popular thing now, which is where people can pay 
to play the game throughout the course of development and there are frequent updates mm. usually so the game's not scheduled to be out for say a year yet but you can buy it now and download the most current version and then be involved with the development process that's kind of a combination of the two you're beta testing the game but you're also playing like an early version of it as a, as in like a yeah. demo um and it's sort of an ongoing thing and that's kind of the way that lots of companies honest, are yeah a lot of the time it's just kind of get out get out of jail free card calling it early access instead of just calling it full release so you don't have people complaining about the bugs and stuff if you call it's it early access it's... Yeah, but... early access for about four years isn't it now? <laughs> yeah. it's just yeah. an ex- excuse there's, there's... to say it's still we're still working on it but i mean no game really um, of those types of games really ever go into full release because they're you're always going to be working on these games, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, and lots of companies will often just never come out of early mm. access, and that's why it's got some negative connotations behind it. But some companies do it mm. really well. Like, Hades did it excellent. Yeah, yeah. Um, she goes on to say, I have to mention Tencent, uh, 50 Cent's little cousin. Who's doing feedback, Ben? Sorry? Oh, that's, right, the email. Uh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> uh, I have to mention uh, 10 cents 50 cents little cousin and Donald absolutely hysterical <laughs> glad you enjoyed it can you do your impression again no oh um, and lastly my question for the week I mean you've asked quite a few questions to be honest <laughs> have Bickler, but um, I'll call this your last question have you ever had a crush on a video game character or she said it on a video character, but I assume she means video game yeah. character. Yeah. Um, me personally, I can't really think of one. Just don't. Yeah, same. To be honest, not really into that hint of shit in it. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm struggling too. To be honest, um, I would say knuckles the hedgehog. <laughs> As you do. No, I mean, I, I could. I when no I was idea. younger, I could probably say that I had, would have a crush on on a video game character's personality. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like, on, I, th- I, I can't think. I, no, I can't think of anyone. But like, I probably thought that oh. someone was really cute or someone, you know, things like that. But not, not like an actual attraction to, <laughs> to a game character. Yeah. Uh, so sorry to disappoint. I'm. I'm yeah, I'm going through a lot of games in my head. No, I can't, I can't think of genuinely can't think of anything, and I would quite comfortably say, yeah, I could I, I just can't, literally can't. can't. Uh, okay, and as she said, that's it. Bye, pickles. Kiss, kiss, kiss to you too. And that's it. We're done. That is episode good. twenty-four of Praise the Pickle Retrospect. Happy Pickler is back. Happy Pickler is back. We expect an email every week. Thank you very much. And now we're expecting an email from uh, Lightning Leech. I don't know yeah, where Lightning Leech. Either. Where you at, man? Come on. And anyone else that wants to email or send us some feedback, yeah. please do so. And do it by going on to Facebook or Instagram, uh, Facebook or Twitter, which is Praise the Pickle. Or you can go on Instagram, which is Praise the Pickle Podcast. Or you can write an email in. She's praise pickle podcast at gmail.com. Thank you very much, Kevin. And if any of you have listened to this podcast, can you do me a favour? Go on to, if you're on Apple Podcasts, just go back and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and then just tap that fifth star, please, because some, some ratings would be wunderbar. Wunderbar, that sounds awful. Wunderbar. And um, it just gives us a little bit more traction, which is really nice. It's nice to know we're not talking into the void. Um <laughs> and we love you all we're going to leave you all until next week toodaloo pickle goodbye everyone sweet dreams and adios pickle out <laughs>